I know you'd miss that. Good to see everybody. Good to be back. Uh, and we say before we forget it, uh, Lord's willing, there'll be Bible study this Wednesday. So, you know, just to put that out there and pass on if anybody interested in coming, we appreciate it. Uh, or if you can't, Pete records it most of the time if we're here and things and he's here, no sickness and so on, and so you can view it on that too. So, uh, but, uh, and we'll still be in the book of Galatians chapter 3 on uh, Bible study. If you're wondering where we were at, we've been out for a revival and everything's on the Bible study, so, but it's good to be back this morning. Uh, First, we're going to start out in the book of James, chapter 3. Just a verse or so in it, and then we'll wind up in uh, Ezekiel and Job and uh, and so on. And, uh, but anyways, in the book of James, uh, chapter 3, verse 2 in particular, uh, we'll start at verse 1, but 2 is the verse in particular on things. And, uh you know, the Word of God says in it, the, the instructions from God says, Be ye perfect, even as I am perfect. Be ye holy, even as I am holy. So how can we do that? How can we, and he said for us to strive unto perfection. We learn, we grow in grace and knowledge and wisdom of Jesus Christ. So when we come into the perfection of the faith, there's some places you can look up uh, that we come into the perfection of the faith. And we can look and see that uh, he says that the for the law, in the book of Hebrews, he said, for the law made nothing perfect. So everybody's dependent upon the law to make them perfect. He said, through and by the nothing was made perfect. But the bringing in of a better hope did. What was that better hope that was bringing in of Christ? That's what makes us perfect. Can you say, I'm not perfect? Well... No, we can look and see flaws and blemishes and and failures in all of us if you're looking at us as a flesh. But when you walk in the Spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. You won't see those blemishes and things that are there. And they won't because they won't be there, because there'll be no sin. Sin is where the imperfection is at. So how you to avoid that? So listen to what James tells us in this. My brethren, be not Many masters knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Okay? For in many things uh, we offend all. If any man offend not in word. Okay? When we don't offend in word. Through, uh, on this thing. So, so what is the word? The, is Christ. So the same is a perfect man. So you say you can, people say you can't be perfect. I'm not, I'm not perfect. I see bumper stickers. I'm not perfect. Just forgive we don't really catch the meaning of what being perfect is. When you're forgiven, you are perfect. When we accept, he said, therefore there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Okay? So, and able also to bridle the whole body. When we come in to knowing how for ourselves, but also how that we should worship God today. How that we should come and how that we bridle the whole body, that we bring it all in. Apostle Paul said, I know how to bring my body into subjection to Christ Jesus himself. But also he knew those that he was instructing how to bring that body of Christ, which is the church, into the perfection of worship of God. So he was perfect. Okay, so that we learn how and all that body fitly joined together that we come and do the things that God wants you to do and that the next one beside of you does and the one in front of you does and the one behind you does and listen today when we're all joined together we work as that perfect body which is the church which is Christ's body and so we're in that perfection of things okay so he tells us then let's go in to the book of Job, just a minute, chapter 1, book of Job. Then we'll be into Ezekiel a little bit, and probably in Matthew some, a little bit later. But anyways, book of Job, chapter 1, verse 1. And so God gives us people to look at, that we might look and see the pattern. You say, well, 
we, you know, we're just now coming into that perfection. We're just now, in our modern time, we know how to do better. It's all, it's still the same. There's nothing, no new thing under the sun. Those of old, and here's old Job, long time ago, knew how to walk in perfection, how to walk and keep the body bridled, and how to tame those things in the book of James said that we tame the tongue and we can do all these things and keep it, bring it into subjection. Job was a, such a man. And he said, and my whole thing is, there was a man. There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job and that man was perfect and upright. What made him perfect? He knew Jesus Christ. He knew the Word. He knew how to uh, do all that, that, bring that Word into subjection. Listen today of how his life might be patterned after that Word, the di direction and the instruction of what God had given him, how he should perform in who? In front of his family, in front of all of his uh, friends. And no doubt he knew, you know, we, we read of some of the friends that Job had how that he should conduct himself in front of his friends, in front of his family, and him being a upright man and had much possession and one that feared God. What made him be perfect was he feared God and eschewed evil. He moved away from evil. He ran away from it. He did not want that to be a part of his life instead of uh, bringing it towards him and running toward it, he moved away from those things. And there was born unto him seven sons and three daughters. So he wanted to live his life showing that he followed after God. He wanted to show his friends that he followed after God. He wanted to show all the people all around him. He said that he was, had all of that of, of a man of the east and he was rich and all of these things. His substance also was 7,000 sheep 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she asses and a very great household so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. No doubt he was known by a lot of people, Job was. But most of all, he, God knew him, he knew God, and he was perfect and upright in all of his ways so much. And his sons went and and feasted in their houses every one his day and sent and called for the three sisters to eat and drink with them. So they had, a, had a, their children was gathering together and it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning. All their things that they were doing. Do, do, do you not think about your children? your family, maybe your brothers and sisters and all them, in what they do. And you, you're concerned that sometimes when they're not doing just exactly what that the Word of God says that we ought to be doing, and we look and see, well, how is the guideline of my own life that to listen today, or no, in other words, a pattern that my children might look after? Do I love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength? Do I love my neighbor as myself? Do I want to have God in my life as a direction that I follow after that God by the Spirit is leading me, guiding me, and directing my footsteps for the steps of a good man ordered by the Lord? So do we want that? So Job was concerned with his children and offered up early in the morning, offered up burnt offering according to the number of them all. He was concerned, not for himself, but he was concerned for his children. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. He continued, and he didn't stop in this thing. There was no break of it. We know the story of Job, of those things, and how all those things that took place in his life, and how that he had great wealth and, and possession and things like that. And as it goes on, and listen today, when the flesh or old Satan and things comes on, and this world looks at us and says, oh, you're okay. 
As long as you're in church, you'll do that which is right. But listen, the world's looking at us. We may be in church this morning, but our greatest testimony is what are we doing outside of when we come together. I'd rather listen today out here in the world and the world's looking at us and saying, oh, as long as they're in church, they live good, godly, and they do these things. Brother, the real test is what you're doing out there. How the world's looking at us. How how we answer. How, brother, what's in our heart and are concerned with what the world is. And, brother, the world will say, you take away those things and he'll curse you to your face. How this world will say, oh, when we get him out here and we make him mad and he'll curse God, he'll curse you. He'll do all these things. I'm speaking of myself now. Oh, brother, listen, I find myself sometimes coming short of the glory of God and the word of God. But I'm so thankful today for a long-suffering and a merciful God that He said, Little children, I would not that you sin, but if you sin, you have an advocate with the Father, which is Jesus Christ the righteous. But there was a man that I can look at, a brother that was from us, that had all of his possessions, had all these things he was going through. A brother, his children, a brother, the house fell in on him. And brother, all of these things of his possessions were stolen and was taken away. In all of these things, yet Job did not sin. He said, yea, brother, all of these things, he did not curse God. He kept his integrity, the integrity of Job in so much even that God, he, he tells us, remember the patience of Job. We could talk about the patience. Though that he had all of these things and so there was a man. There was a man that you and I could look at and there was a man that we could look and see how that all these things that he went through and even though all the things that he had and the wealth and things and it was taken away and then when the world comes back and look and said oh but yeah but touch his own body and see what will happen and brother listen today we know the story of Job that he was afflicted of himself those other things were out there and it had not touched him exactly for himself but listen today when it got deeper. Our brother, when it comes down for you and I and our own personal concerns, our brother, listen today, and he was afflicted with balls from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. And he got down and scraped himself with a pot shirt and listen, sackcloth and ashes. And listen today is why. I said, why don't you just curse God and die? Our brother, and he said, thou talkest like a foolish one. He held on of everything that is so there was a man that I'm able to look at and able to recognize and know how that God said, if I be for you, who can be against you? What is the greatest possession, a brother, that you and I and old Job had? Brother, he had his salvation. He had his the spirit of God that would direct him and his concern in his heart for his family, for the church, for the assembly, for the people. And he did not want to give up and he stood steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of God. Even when his friends come along and said, Job, what have you done to get down in this shape? Brother, listen today, Job began to search himself and he began to ask them questions. And brother, he held on to his integrity. And brother, listen, his friends, a couple of his, had to repent of what the, listen, the accusations. And they looked and seen there was a man in the land of us. There's a man today that you and I can look at. There was a man that was made flesh. Listen, God was made flesh and dwelled among us. He was more than just you and I. He was Emmanuel, God, with us that we can look and see. That good, listen, old Job realized, listen, somebody greater than me. When you and I can look at, let's turn with the book in the book of Ezekiel. Chapter 40, just a few verses here in chapter 40 of Ezekiel. Board 40 and 1, while you're turning there, in the 5 and 20th year of our captivity, in the beginning of the year, in the 10th day of the month, in the 14th year after the city was smitten, in the self-same day, the hand of the Lord was upon me and brought me thither. 
Uh, brother, when there's trouble and heartache, you look at our land and our country today. Uh, Brother, we need to be shown some things. We need to be told. And we need to come in remembrance as Peter said. I would stir up your pure minds by the way of remembrance. How that we need to remember what God has told us to do. How that we should conduct ourselves in the house of God. How God wants us as the individual as Job. How that there was a man that we could look at. How that there was somebody a brother able to direct us and to tell us and there ought to be a man today that would stand up a brother and proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord there are to be those listen today that would be steadfast and unmovable always abounding in the works of the Lord and brother they ought to be we need to be reminded a brother what God has showed us and how he's brought us up out of a place of death and heartache and tears and there ought to be some rejoicing even amidst all of this turmoil that's going on I'd rather listen today and be able to tell the people of the things that's going on listen to what he said in the visions of God brought he me uh, me unto the land of Israel and set me upon the very high mountain by which was the frame of a city on the south Brother, the foundation and the frame of it. And listen, the elders obtained a good report because they knew by faith the worlds were framed by him. And brother, he brought me thither and behold, there was a man. Brother, listen, to whose appearance was like the appearance of brass and with a, of a line of flax in his hand and a measuring reed. And he stood to get the gate. And he said, and the man said unto me, son of man, behold, with thine eyes and hear with thine ears. Uh, brother, we got to have ears to hear with. Uh, I'm not talking about what's on the side of our head, uh, but we need to listen to what the Spirit is telling us uh, uh, because we need to tell our people, uh, uh, brother, God's the same yesterday, today, and forever, uh, and He changeth not. Uh, we need to be reminded, brother, uh, where God has brought us from. Uh, and if we have troubles and woes here in this life, uh, God is able to deliver us out of them all even though the afflictions of the righteous are many but God knows how to deliver us out of them all and so listen today old Job held on to that and there was a man that held on to it and you're wondering can I hold on to it God is no respect of persons and so he said and the man said unto me son of man behold with thine eyes so listen today if we can't see clearly what God wants us to do in this modern time it's no different than what G wanted Job to do in the old times he ain't changed he's not went anywhere he's not lost any power Though it looks like wickedness is going to look, uh, overcome, God's got a word for us and a hope for us that it's not. Oh, listen today, this world may be filled full of darkness, but the light will remain there. He said, oh, when you see and you hear, and he said, and set thine heart upon all that I will show thee. Where's our heart at? Do we want to know about God? Do we want to know more about Jesus? Do we want to know more about that homeland? Do we mean to know more when we get there? Our brother, do we want to know how that we can be led and guided and direct us how that we should walk and how we should talk and what we should do? And brother, how that the Spirit of God should lead us? And he said, those that be led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And do we rely upon the promise of God, which is yes, and amen that the promise of God is I brother that through and by his son if we'll believe on him you should not perish but have everlasting life though we have woes and heartaches so he said I want you to go to Israel he brought me up in a vision he said and he showed me he said this man there was a man whose appearance was the appearance of brass and brother listen today and he said in the upon heart upon all that will show thee for to the intent that I might show them that are art that that thee art thou brought hither, he said, declare all that thou seest to the house of Israel. There was a purpose for his vision. 
And he said, a people without a vision or a nation or a people, our brother, without a vision shall perish. We've lost our vision. We've lost our eyesight. We're looking towards the flesh. We're looking towards the world and the earth. And listen, that first man is of the earth, earthy. And we're dependent upon the first man and not the second man, which was the Lord from glory. My brother, listen, the day was from heaven. And God sent his son here to die in our stead. And we cannot see what Jesus done for us and how we should live that life for God. Because God said, I'm a jealous guy. Unless you believe in my son, Jesus said, unless you believe I am he, you will die in your sin. And where I am, you cannot come. So he said, declare all that thou seest to the house of Israel. So he tells us, he said, I want you. He goes on, you can go on all the way to the end of this thing. Many chapters. But I'm just going to hit a, a verse or two of this. In 44 and 5, and I'm going to paraphrase, he said, I want, you to, I want you to show them who Israel, who us as a church, who listen today, when listen today, when we come and the instructions for correction, for help, and he said he placed within the church, which remember is the body of Christ. He placed within the body of Christ, which is the church, teachers, preachers, huh? Those listen today with the things listen today for the perfecting of the saints. That we might come into perfection of the saints. That we might, and he give us these uh, men of old like Job that we could look at. Our brother listen today that held on to his integrity. And brother, when it comes to hard times, listen today, whether it's on the outside and it don't affect us directly, but then when it comes and affects us directly, we can still hold on to our integrity. The strength. Uh, he said, show them the rebellion to Israel. Then he goes on in 43 and 10. He said, show that they, that they might be ashamed. Show them for their shame and their abomination what they've done. How that they have brought in. He goes in and say, that you've brought into my sanctuary. We have allowed things to take the same as they did that day. You say, oh, it's new today. How we're allowing those to come in and try to preach the word of God or witness and saying God is this and God is that. Brother, they had the same thing going on in Ezekiel's time. Uh, that you brought into my sanctuary, into my tabernacle, those that were uncircumcised of the flesh and uncircumcised of the heart, and you brought them in, brother, listen today, and they have polluted all of these things. I want you to show them Ezekiel where they went wrong that they might repent. God does not have the message come to us. Brother, for naught, God knows where to send it. God knows how for, or to remind us. And he said, I want you to remind them that they might be ashamed, that they might repent, that they might come and do those things that I had said, that if we'll come and our people today, the same as it was then, that if our heart was towards God, that we come with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, with a mouth confession made unto salvation, Job and him had to do the same thing in front of his family, in front of his friends and all of those people that he was in connection with. And they looked at him and knew that Job was a man of integrity. He ensued evil. And even when all the things happened to him, boy, he held on to the word of God. He, held, he was a perfect man. He knew, as James said in that, he knew about that word. He knew how, listen, to have control of that. He knew, listen, today that he could be used as an instrument. People were looking at him. Just look at him. And even if his own household, why don't you just curse God and die? And he could look at him and he knew how, just what to say. Thou speakest a foolish one. Huh? It's foolishness to no matter what happens in our life that we turn away from God that we should leave the love of God because listen today we get into trouble because there is a man brother that can help us uh, and we need to be reminded just as Ezekiel did that listen God showed him the vision God needs to show you and I we need to have the eyesight that our eyes would be open we need to have listen our ears opened up and our vision brother where we can be able to see clearly that we would not stumble, that we would not fall as David
David said, I love the Lord because He has kept my soul from death, my feet from falling, and mine eyes from tears. So what shall I render unto the Lord for all of His benefits? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Psalms 116. We call upon Him in the time of trouble. Uh, oh, we can look and see. John, he tells us even there was a man named John who was sent from God to tell that Christ was coming to, to listen today to bear witness of the light and he testified, I'm not that light, but there's one coming after me. He's the light. I must decrease. He must increase. And brother, listen, there was a man that, listen, today told about the love of God and that God was sending the Son. And that, listen, he appeared. So there was a man and his name was John. Somebody we could look at. Our brother, listen, when we get into trouble and we begin to doubt, or thou the one we look for when he was put into prison, he said, you go tell them. Our brother, listen, today that the poor have the gospel preached unto them. Our brother, they're dead or raised. Our brother, they're lame is healed and the deaf hear and the blind see and the poor have the gospel preached unto them. That was enough for John. He knew it was truth. He knew it was the word of God. And it satisfied him even though he knew that he was going to the death sentence. That was satisfied him. Uh, Book of Matthew. Chapter 12. When we look and we see what God has done for us and what He wants to do and He could use us. Uh, you look at yourself and see there was a man. Well, when, when listen today, tomorrow, next week, or next year, ten years from now, I don't know when, but somebody look back at your life and say there was a man. You say, well, I'm a woman. We're talking about spiritually. <coughs> the integrity. There was a man. There was somebody that stood for God and that God was able to use us and God was able to help us. And so they had come in, in chapter 12, verse, uh, verse 9 is our particular where we start. Before we get into that, we can look and see the, the religious order of the day. We can see it everywhere, brother, from the top down to the bottom. Religious orders everywhere. They'll say they believe in God and curse His name in the next sentence. Huh? You say, well, that's awful strong. I'm just telling the truth. Oh, we, we'll pray and we just we ask Him to bless the United States and we'll curse Him in the next sentence. That's not a Job. That's not a John. That's not an Esther. That's not a Ruth. Huh? We need to look and see. Brother, listen today. When the religious order looked and looked and was accused in Christ, and you say, well, if I tell this world of the truth, will things happen? We're going to find out here in a minute. It will. Though that you would do, when you would do good, Apostle Paul said, when I would do good, I would find evil is always present. When you follow after the way of God, you'll be persecuted for it. When we do that which is right, when you look and see what Job was doing, who accused him? His wife. Who accused him? His friends. Listen today, when we look and we see around us, when we tell of the truth, brother, listen today, the world will come against you. This world will hate you. And religion is a part of the world. Not pure religion is not. When we keep ourselves unspotted from the world, we visit the widows and the orphans, and that's not... That's good to go to the orphanages and, and help the widows. If he's talking about a whole more spiritual different meaning. That's good when you do that, but it's more into the things. Those that don't have a father, if you got a father, my daddy's been dead for years. Huh? But I still got a father in heaven. Huh? Got a mother. She's been dead the same amount of years. But the mother that I'm spiritual I'm talking about is Jerusalem, which is from above in the book of Galatians. Huh? 
So when we go and look and we visit those that don't have God, that has not a father, brethren, we can tell them you can obtain a father. You can have, listen, a mother. And brother, listen, today you can be a part of the family and be in the body of Jesus Christ. And they looked and said, well, Christ, you're allowing your disciples to eat with unwashed hands. They're plucking the corn. They're doing all of these things. And he reminded them and showed them things that they should have known. And he said, what good are the ordinances? Uh, brother, why did the Jews, brother, the Hebrew people, why did they have these ordinances? And why, what did it profit them? He said, ever win. Because those ordinances and the things and the commandments of God, though that listen today, these, this law could not make you perfect but it would still point you towards Jesus Christ. It was holy. And if we're going to live in them, you're going to have to keep every one of them. It's impossible. Huh? So then, how do we come into that one with promise or hope? Because then he was given to show them. Even Moses knew that these things, it was for us, for a schoolmaster to help us to realize Jesus. We realize that we are in sin that we come short. Job realized it. Brother, listen today. If he looked upon him as in the flesh, brother, listen today, he would be perverse. But when God looks upon us because we have the integrity of the Word of God and the Word of God was made flesh, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was God and the Word was with God and the same was with Him in the beginning. Oh, Job, way a long time ago, that same Word, it ain't changed. And so they begin to accuse Jesus, why are these things? And he said, verse 8, for the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. And he told, he said, Why, well, if you look at this law, it said, if you know the truth of these things that to listen today, then I'll have mercy and not sacrifice. Huh? God would rather listen for us to have the mercy. And he'd rather for us to realize of his mercy for his long suffering and merciful to us than sacrifice. And when he was departed thence, he went into their synagogue. Verse 9, 12 and 9. And behold, there was a man. Somebody now that we can look at. He don't say who it is. There was a man. There's probably somebody in your life you can look back and say there was a man. There was somebody that you was looking at. And brother, there was a man which had his hand withered. He had problems. There was a man. And listen today, and they ask him, saying, so when they trick you up and say, it is law, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days that they might accuse him? Is it lawful for us to come and say, listen today, somebody asks, and they say, well, I've been good. Remember the rich young ruler? I've been good. I've kept the commandments from my youth up. When we come to somebody and tell them, listen today, do you believe on Jesus Christ? Unless we believe in Jesus Christ, you ain't a going. And when we tell the truth, this world will not like it because we love darkness rather than light. There was a man that had the withered hand and they come to listen to try to accuse him and say, is it lawful? Is it not better that we have mercy than sacrifice? That we just leave that person? To, is it not better for us to tell people that it's Jesus Christ and Him crucified? Is it not better for us, no matter when it is, and no matter what rule and, and listen, regulation and creed of man, that listen today, that the Word of God tells us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and without Jesus we cannot make it, but we can give them the hope and the promise that if we'll confess, and we'll look towards Jesus Christ. He said, I am just to forgive you if you'll ask. <clears throat> huh? And he said unto them, what, what man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep? He, the commandment, the word, brother, the word was here telling them. And you, brother, of their own thinking, of their own ways, listen today, and because he said that uh, those things that they thought about, he knew the answers to. He didn't have to raise his voice in the street. Uh, that shall have one sheep, just one, not a whole herd, not a flock, but just one, and it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? <coughs> He's asking the religious there. The Pharisee, won't, he, won't you do it? <coughs> but you ain't supposed to do anything on the Sabbath day. 
do no work of what they looked at. And brother, this work that you and I are supposed to, we should be doing is believing upon him whom he sent. That's the work. Amen. That's the work. We believe on him whom he sent. John 6. When we tell and we believe and do that work, we believe on that which God, listen, rested in and Christ come and finished it. When we tell of that story, that old, old story, how a Savior came from glory and saved a wretch like me. When we tell of those things. So, we, it, on it, so how much then is a man better than a sheep? He's trying to get to their intellectual side and their thinking side and how they view their, their spiritual way. Is not a man better than a sheep? Wherefore is it lawful to do well on the Sabbath days? Then saith he to the man, uh, there was a man. Don't say who he is. Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it forth and he was restored whole like as the other. God is able to do that exceedingly abundantly above that which we are able to even think. What we're able to do, God is able. When we cannot do, and we know we have limitations, brother and I, because we are but yet flesh, and God knows we're flesh, but listen, God with him, there is nothing impossible with God. Amen. And so he was showing them of the things, listen, and the great things, that there was a man that had a need. And brother, when we see somebody in need, brother, there was a man, brother, that came along and told that man, and listen, made him whole. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him. Just as soon as we do the works of God, somebody falls out from sin, the first thing that comes out of the world's mouth, <clears throat> we got to be careful we're not of the world. Well, he's so bad he won't last two weeks. When God cleans it up, God cleans it up. And we need to be there to help them how they might destroy him. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence and had great multitudes followed him and healed them all. There was many that was there. So when, listen, today we try to suppress the way of God, listen, today. But when we come along with the greatest power upon this earth uh, is by the Spirit of God and the Word of God. It changes people's lives. Uh, it helps us. It brings restoration to our soul. It brings restoration to our lives that it might be fulfilled. And we charge them should not make him known, and it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment unto the Gentiles, to those that, that they say cannot come in. To this old world, when you look out here and you could you could go on to name all the different sins, you know, of drunkenness and prostitution and of theft and of murder and then right on and on and on and sin and say they can't come in. Brother, listen today, they can be forgiven. They can come in to the family of God. But we've got to do just like every just as the, the goodest person ever in the world. Uh, but a person that thinks, oh, I, there's nothing wrong, just like the rich young ruler. They'll listen today. They've kept the commandments. They wouldn't do this, and they wouldn't do that to give the shirt off their back. But there's one thing thou lackest yet. Take up thy cross and follow me. Sell all that you got. Sell out these things that the flesh is wanting. And brother, follow after Christ. <clears throat> he shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed shall he not break. And a smoking flax shall he not quench till he send forth judgment unto victory. And in his name shall the Gentiles trust. You want to tell this world? There is a man. There was these men. Huh? There was these men. There was a man. There was a man named Job. There was a man named John. There was a man with a withered hand. And all them could look towards God and see how God helped them, and they declared Jesus to be the life. There was a man, but there is a man huh, whose name is Jesus, who was Emmanuel, God with us. There is a man sitting at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and I today that if we are lost and undone, he's sitting right there to make intercession. 
If we have problems in our life, as Job had, uh, that we have to spiritually get down in sackcloth and ashes and with the pot sheared, scrape our flesh and sores from the top of our head to the sole of our feet, hold on to our integrity. Look towards God through Jesus Christ who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Hold on to Him and listen today that God may work with us in these dark times that we're living in now and let us shine bright for Jesus Christ. Will it bring persecution? Oh, they went about to find out how they might destroy Him. They'll go about trying to hush you up that you won't name the name of Jesus Christ. Is it going to get worse? Absolutely. It's going to get worse. And we see it coming. The most subtle beast of the field is working. Uh, it's working in the hearts of people that don't love God. They hate God. And those that he said in his word, those that hate me, love death. They like that death. They like that darkness. They don't want that resurrection to come unto life everlasting. They want to stay in that darkness because what they're doing, have been doing, and want to continue to do, they love it. And they want to stay that way. And they want you that way. They'll not be satisfied until you stay in that darkness or come back into darkness. But hold on to your integrity. Hold on to it. And remember, there was a man that you can go back and look. Can I make it? And look and see, there is a man that can help you. And his name is Jesus. That at this name, uh, there's no not a name given wherein a man must be saved, except that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords to the glory of the Father. May God bless you today. Appreciate you. Brother Darrell.